I remember being aware, even like at a very young age, that, you know, things were kind of tough for our family. At that time, my parents just starting, they just had a few machines. I remember being like, how does that work? I just knew how important it was for our family, those socks. Making socks felt very much like just who we are, you know? It seemed like every single mill was closing around us. And I became aware at that time of the importance of supporting everything that I possibly could that's made in America. My mom and dad named the business after my younger sister and me. Her name is Emily and G for Gina. When I was a teenager, my parents, every time I would go into a store, the first thing that they would do is run over to the sock racks and turn it around and see who made the socks and where they came from. And a lot of times it said made in Fort Payne, Alabama. My sister and I were so annoyed. We're like, oh, now we have to look at socks like every time. But now I know why they did that because I do the same thing now. So. <laughs> Fort Payne, Alabama was known as the sock capital of the world. One out of every eight pairs of socks manufactured globally came from our small town in Northeast Alabama. Kids at school, their parents either worked in a mill and had for years, or their parents had a mill or had some sock machines. There was just this insane buzz and energy in town. And that was because of the hosiery business. Not just people making socks, but people selling yarn and all of the other businesses involved that supported the hosiery industry. My parents were finally able to purchase their own home. And I remember that being like a really special moment. I was a business major and I did one of my class projects on the mill. So I think that is when my wheels started turning. But there wasn't a job that made sense for me to come home to. I knew I wanted to be a part just didn't know how at that time. But during that time, things were changing in the industry. In 2005, when the CAFTA, Central America Free Trade Agreement, was signed, slowly but surely after that, about, you know, our 140 plus mills really began to shut down because of production moving to Central America. And, you know, you can't help but wonder, when are we gonna close? I mean, that was scary and, and, you know, things got quiet. I knew people that were losing their jobs. There were friends whose parents had mills, like my parents, and they were closing. My dad's brothers lost their mills. And I felt, I felt alone. I felt like we were alone and I felt like America wasn't aware. Not that they didn't care that, you know, manufacturing jobs were going away, but just that there wasn't awareness out there. When I graduated, I looked to other things. My first job out of college was uh, working at a ski shop in Birmingham. And then I got into real estate uh, probably a year after that. It wasn't for me, but I want to be excited about what I do for a living and I want to matter to me. Finally, one day, you know, I just kind of all, it literally hit me. So traditionally in Fort Payne, you knit a sock for other companies. You knit it and you seam the toe and then you ship it out the door and you're finished. Being really young and right out of college, looking at socks. You know, how could we start something on our own? Not just make socks for other people, but make socks for ourselves that we don't have to worry that our business will be taken away. From that thought to 
becoming in my mid-20s extremely passionate about um, organic living and to just wanting to do something for a living that just really mattered to me every single day. So I think my dad and my mom were probably super surprised when I came to them with my idea of making organic cotton socks. They're like, what? No. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I remember talking to you about it briefly. At that time, the industry was beginning to tank a little bit. And yeah. I knew, you know, y'all were having struggles with the business at that point. I remember thinking, why can't we make socks for these people? You remember me talking to you about that? Yeah, we couldn't think outside that box. Plus, you know, we weren't set up to do packaging and, right. you know, bleaching and dyeing and, you know, all that. Well, first off, I didn't know anything about organic anything, let alone organic socks. <laughs> we talked about it and thought, you know, that may be something we could start. I just really thought it was time to try something new, Yeah. you know? So in 2008, we decided that we would launch our own brand and that it would be a line of very simple, you know, athletic and kind of basic organic cotton socks. And it's called Zakano. Starting a brand, it was 100% different than what, you know, my parents' background was. I remember one of my first thoughts was, we need a logo. Then it was like, okay, what next? <laughs> packaging, yes, yes, we need to get packaging. But who does that? We need barcodes, I don't know how to do that. We would learn one little thing, and then it's like, okay, what's next? And then we'd figure that out and we'd learn it, and that's how it was every step of the way. And it was important to me that because our socks are made in USA, I wanted our cotton to be grown in the U.S. as well. I wanted to know the people who grew our cotton. After some work, we found a grower in Texas, and I know our farmer. In 2013, we launched another brand, which is called Little River Sock Mill. It's named after Little River Canyon, a national preserve that is in our backyard in Fort Payne. With our Zucano line, we had probably somewhere around 50 to 80 active SKUs per season. And with Little River, we now have well over 300. We're makers of this. We don't just source this out. We make our socks. There's some challenges there. I feel personally spread pretty thinly. Times are always tough. I'm in Fort Payne two to three days a week, sometimes more, depending on the season. I go to my parents' house on Monday mornings, and then I come home to Birmingham on Wednesday evenings. I'm married and you know, it can be hard to leave your husband some weeks. So we've been married for coming up on five years. My husband and I haven't started a family yet. And I'm at this point in my life, I'm not exactly sure how to start that next step. I've started these brands from the ground up and as silly as it may sound, they kind of feel like children to me and they mean like everything to me. I guess I'm a little afraid, you know, starting a family means that I have to take some of my focus off of something that means so much to me, and that, that's a little scary. Yeah, I can't quite get my head around that yet. Our employees are very much like family to us. We have a few that have been with us since the very beginning. They all love it as much as I do. You know, they all want to see it succeed and everybody knows what needs to be done in order to make something right. I'm happy to say that in the next few weeks, we will be 
uh, starting construction on a little sock shop at our mill. I love that it's gonna be at our mill because you know it just so speaks to like who we are. It means a lot to me that we're still making socks at my family's business in Fort Payne, Alabama. It means a lot that I'm in some small way helping to, you know, carry on that sock heritage in town. And I, I feel really good about it. I'm lucky.